Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. In today's headlines, charges dropped against three militants of South Africa's Abel Ali Bazem Jondolo. Trade unions observe strike in Haiti to protest social and economic insecurity. UN report warns of possible war crimes committed in Libya. And 60,000 film and television workers authorize first ever strike in the United States. In our first story, we take a look at South Africa, where criminal charges against three militants of the Shack Dwellers movement, Ebilali Besim Jondolo, have been dropped. George Bonono, Mapive Gazela, and Siniko Mia were accused of conspiracy to murder. The charges were dismissed by a magistrate court in Durban on October the 4th. The three leaders were freed just days after the charges against the members of Abel Ali's Ekenana occupation were dropped. They had been accused in a murder near Keto Mena. The two witnesses in the case later admitted that they had lied in their testimonies. Bonono and Gesela had held a public meeting to discuss the case on March 21st. They were arrested in May along with Siniko Mia, who was not present at the meeting. While Bonono and Gesela were granted bail, Mia remained imprisoned. A prosecutor sought extra time last week to find more evidence in the case. The charges were finally dropped on Monday after no evidence was found. Abel Ali's activists have faced intimidation, arrest and even custodial torture for years. The movement has over 75,000 members and occupies land in towns and cities to build makeshift shacks. An important project has been the Ekenana occupation, which operates as a commune. The site has been repeatedly targeted by eviction drives and residents have been injured by armed police and private security. Moving on, a United Nations report has warned that warring factions in Libya may be guilty of war crimes. All parties, including third states, foreign fighters and mercenaries have been accused of violating international law. The report is based on documents, satellite imagery, over 150 interviews and investigations since 2016. Investigators obtained a map showing landmines placed near civilian buildings. These were located in areas abandoned by the forces of General Khalifa Haftar. The map was reportedly found on the laptop of someone from the Russian company Wagner. The report also said that torture was inflicted on asylum seekers in Libyan prisons on a daily basis. Aid agencies have warned of arbitrary detention and sexual violence against migrants. 4,000 people were detained in a widespread crackdown over the weekend. The UN report also says that airstrikes have killed dozens of families. As per UN estimates, 20,000 foreign mercenaries and fighters are present in Libya. The country's interim government announced on Sunday that some of these fighters had begun to withdraw. It is seeking a complete withdrawal by the Libyan Stability Conference scheduled later this month. We move on to Haiti, where trade unions across several sectors observed a 24-hour strike on October the 4th. A majority of shops, schools and transport services remained closed in the capital, Port-au-Prince. The strike was called to protest fuel scarcity and rising prices, especially in the black market. The Association of Petroleum Professionals had stated a few weeks ago that armed gangs had seized oil terminals. According to the Union Force to Save Haiti, or FOSA, the strike was also held to denounce abductions by armed groups. Violence by such groups has displaced over 19,000 people in Port-au-Prince. Haiti's Human Rights Analysis and Research Center documented 150 killings and 200 kidnappings in June alone. The Protestant Federation also kept its facilities shut on Monday. This was to protest the murder of a deacon and the abduction of his wife last week. The Association of Engineers and Architects also demanded the resignation of Police Chief Leon Charles. Unions and activists in Haiti have long accused the government of complicity with armed gangs. They also criticized Prime Minister Ariel Henry for not condemning the brutal treatment of Haitian migrants by U.S. officials. The U.S. has deported thousands of people at a time when Haiti is coping with a severe earthquake. 
around 4.3 million people are experiencing high levels of food insecurity at the same time. In our final story, around 60,000 film and television production workers have authorized a historic strike in the United States. Members of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, or the IATSE, cast their votes between October 1st and the 3rd. 89.6% of eligible workers across 36 local union branches cast their ballots. The measure was passed with an overwhelming 98.7% votes in favor. The strike vote is a result of ongoing disputes with alliance of motion picture and television producers. It represents productions in Amazon, Disney and Netflix among other major studios. Workers have pointed to long work days extending beyond 12 hours, sometimes only 9 hours before call times. They are also facing poor working conditions with few breaks and pay below $18 an hour. Other issues include so-called pay discounts imposed by online streaming services and low health care coverage. The IATSE represents over 150,000 people who work behind the scenes in the film and TV productions across the country. The strike could impact food workers, technicians, cinematographers, etc. The union will now resume negotiations with the AMPTP. That is all in today's episode. Log on to www.peoplesdispatch.org for more details. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you.